Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Um, what a wonderful opportunity it is to once again be able to come back with you and to share in the word of God. I pray that everyone is doing well. Um, it is a, a, a hot day. It's a beautiful day, but it's a hot day. And uh, so we just we thank and praise God uh, for the opportunity to be in the land of the living and also uh, to be able to share in the word of God. However, you're with us tonight. We welcome you uh, to another uh, episode of Live with the Kingdom Center. Uh, I want to begin tonight by, first of all, um, extending an apology. Uh, on Monday night, we, we made the effort to air uh, our 50th anniversary show of Kingdom Center Conversations. And if you're with us on Monday night, we thank you for the support. We had some, um, we had some technical difficulties on Monday night. So we will, um, the intention was for, um, for last Monday's show to be a part one of part two, but we will air that show in its entirety on this coming Monday night. So please join us on Monday night for Kingdom Center Conversations, where we will have our 50th, uh, our 50th show celebration, uh, and we'll share a conversation with God with you in its entirety. But we thank you for, uh, for your support for uh, that portion of our ministry, and we thank you for being with us uh, here tonight. Um, what a wonderful, wonderful opportunity it is, and we're just, we're so thankful. So however you're with us, whether you're with us uh, through Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or a free conference call, uh, whether you're watching later, uh, whether you're listening to uh, the Monday radio broadcast uh, that, that we we commonly do on, at 12 o'clock on Monday on the uh, on the Pastor Agrid show, uh, we're just so thankful for all the different platforms that we've been able to use to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Um, just want to lift up in prayer, and, and I won't be specific in this, but just every situation. There are are many bereaved uh, families, many who are dealing with illness, many who are dealing with situations of life. And so we just ask God to bless each and every situation, regardless of what it is that you're going through, regardless of what it is that you're dealing with. We're asking God to just bless uh, each and every situation. We understand our God to be a sovereign God. We understand him to be bigger than all of the troubles and the trials that we deal with on a daily basis. And we are just so very thankful that we have the opportunity to call on his rich and holy name and that we can uh, we can glorify him in our lives and that we can recognize his blessings in all that we do. And then there are, and I'm going to do this at, at the risk of missing someone, uh, but there are a number of birthdays that, that I want to just mention, um, starting with, with earlier in the week, uh, my brother-in-law, uh, David Dickens, had a birthday and, and uh, uh, Minister Sharon Austin had a birthday um, they were both on uh, Sunday, um, and so we thank and praise God for both of them celebrating another birthday. Uh, as we go on today is Brother Stephen Lee's birthday. These are Kingdom Center folks. Brother Stephen Lee's birthday is today, and so we we wish him a happy birthday. Tomorrow, praise be to God, uh, which is what my wife and I are doing right now. Tomorrow is my wife's birthday, and so I thank and praise God uh, for the wonderful woman of God that he has blessed me with. And we are celebrating her uh, this week. Praise be to God. You notice I'm in a little different place. Amen. But we're celebrating her and uh, and just enjoying uh, the opportunity to celebrate another year with my Deborah. So I thank and praise God. As we go into the weekend, uh, my Monday night Kingdom Center conversation co-host, uh, Pastor Clark, her birthday is on Sunday, uh, the 1st. And so we just thank and praise God uh, for Pastor Clark. And Monday is actually my sister-in-law's birthday. Uh, so, you know, my wife's family was busy during the course of that week. Her brother was last Sunday. And, and then uh, Monday will be uh, Reverend Glenda, uh, Glenda Johnson, Glenda Waller Johnson. Her birthday will be on Monday. And so we thank and praise God for all those birthdays. Don't want to miss them. Glenda's husband, Ham, his birthday is coming up next week as well. And so we just, I believe his is the fifth. And so all those birthdays of people who are around me, and I pray that I didn't miss anyone, charge it to my head and not my heart if I did. Amen. But all those birthdays that are coming around, I know there are some other folks that have them coming up and we're going to try to make sure that we grab those as well moving forward. Amen. But we just, we thank and praise God for celebrations. And so before we begin tonight's word, uh, let us pray. Most holy and wise God, we thank you for just allowing us to have another opportunity to share in your word. God, as we come to you, God, tonight, uh, preparing to share in your word. God, we pray that you are glorified. God, we thank you for giving us the opportunity and the ability and the mindset to pray and to share with you 
are in your word, God, and to study your word and to listen to your word, God. And we we, we ask that you just give us the strength and the wisdom to apply your word to our lives on a daily basis. And God, for that in advance, we thank you. God, we thank you for celebrations this week. I thank you for my wife and I thank you for her birthday as well as uh, the, the couple of siblings that she has and uh, that has birthdays in the course of this week also and others that are are connected to us, God, others that are connected to our ministry, God, uh, that have birthdays, God. We just, we're so thankful, God. We're thankful for each platform uh, that you've allowed us to broadcast and to uh, to use, God, for the purpose of spreading your gospel. And God, we pray that as we work to, sh- to spread your gospel, God, we pray, uh, we, we pray, we hope and we pray sincerely, God, that you are glorified in what we share. We thank you, God, and we give you glory. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. And so um, good evening to you all. I see several folks popping in here. Uh, good evening to you all. Coach Walker, God bless you. Good to see you. My cousin Darlene, uh, this is a Brit, uh, my wife, uh, praise God, who's here with me, but she's sharing online with us as well. Uh, Sister Somerville, God bless you. As well as my mother, Evangelist Davis, others who are on other platforms, praise God. And again, those who are listening later, uh, we thank God for you. I want to share with you tonight um, from the topic, uh, you got to love yourself. Amen. You got to love yourself. And, and the scripture that I want to share with you tonight is Matthew, the 11th chapter. I'm going to read uh, just a couple of verses, verses 28 through 30. And from the New King James Version of the Bible, they read this way. Uh, Matthew 11, 28 through 30, New King James, it says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord, and I pray that however you're with us tonight, you will join me in saying amen. And so um, I want to begin my sharing tonight by, first of all, being a little bit transparent. I want to share with you tonight that um, what I'm sharing with you tonight sort of hits home for me. Uh, and I say that it hits home for me in that as, as I was praying earlier about what to share tonight, or as, I was, as I was praying tonight about what to speak to you about tonight, um, God just allowed me to use some self-reflection. And, you know, I've shared with those folks who I pastor each and every week that um, that, that oftentimes when I get up to share a message, uh, oftentimes uh, I'm hearing it for the first time myself because it's God speaking to me as well as through me. Um, but, but I also have to make sure that when I share from God's word, that I'm also listening to God's word and I'm applying God's word to my own life. And so as I began to think about what to share with you all tonight, I began to really think about the fact that, uh, that, that one of my, and I'm just being transparent in this moment, one of my fallacies, one of the things that I struggle with is delegation. One of the things that I struggle with is taking my hands off of things or, or uh, allowing uh, myself to understand what things I need to, to physically handle myself and what things I need to empower others to be able to handle. I struggle with that because uh, in, in all that I do, and you all who know me know that I'm a very hands-on person. I'm a person who's involved in a lot of things. I, I do a lot of different things. And I think, and that's not a toot of my own horn. I thank God for the ability to do a lot of things. God has blessed me with a mind and, 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 and with giftings to be able to do a lot of things. Again, that's not tooting my own horn. That's just recognizing, uh, not that Clinty is great, but that God is great. And he's blessed me with the, the ability. And he's also given me the opportunity to do a whole lot of stuff. And one of the things that I struggle with is that I oftentimes have a hard time saying, and my wife gets on me about this, but I have a hard time saying no. Uh, a, a lot of times I have a hard time uh, trying to back off of things because I realize that there are things that I have the ability to do and I have the opportunity to do. Uh, but I, I, I've often shared from the pulpit and I have to listen to this myself. I've often shared that just because you can doesn't mean you should. And so I struggle with that because I'm a person who likes to be helpful. I like to help people. I love people. I believe that's part of being a pastor is you have to love people. Uh, I love seeing people prosper. I love uh, working to do things. But I struggle with the thought that oftentimes or, or with the activity, because oftentimes I will be so hands on that I fail to empower the people around me because I'm too busy trying to trying to create my own thing or trying to 
trying to go in and do things that I want, uh, things things to, to be done the way that I want them to do. And and, and y'all pray for me because I'm praying for myself. And I, I think one of the important things that we have to be able to do as ministers of the gospel is that we have to help people to understand that we are also imperfect creatures. Sometimes I think uh, people who preach or people who uh, wear robes or people who stand in pulpits will sometimes put off this air or this persona that we've got it all together. And the truth is that none of us, none of us are perfect. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have areas in our lives that we have to work on. And one of those areas that I have to work on is that I have to get to the place where I understand that everything that I can do doesn't mean that I should do everything. And so I'm working on that. And and, and here's the thing. I, I want to make sure that we all understand. It does not mean that because I'm busy, I get to ignore things that need my attention. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that I have to get to the place where I understand. Good evening, Edna. I have to get to the place where I understand that there are some things um, that, that I am called to do. And there are some things that I'm called to show others how to do. That's part of my job. That's part of my calling from the almighty God. There are some things that, uh, that, that I am called to put my hands on. And there are some things that I am called to monitor or I am called to, to guide others through so that others can be empowered and others can be strengthened. And my wife and I were having a conversation this afternoon uh, over just before we went to dinner or over dinner. We were having a conversation about the simple fact that uh, we have to, as human beings, we have to understand that as hard as we work and as much as we do and as 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 well as we want it to go, uh, the truth is that at, at the end of my days, at the end of our days, we have to understand that the activity will carry on with or without you. And the air activity will, will carry on even after you're dead and gone. Now, how well it's carried on may very well depend on how well we've empowered people that we work with. And so I have to, uh, this is me personally, I have to come to an understanding that my job is not just to, to pastor folk and my job is not not just to share messages, but my job is also to empower those uh, whom I pastor, empower those who God has given me the opportunity to share a word with, to empower those uh, who God has given me the opportunity to speak life into, uh, because as I empower those who I deal with, then it's important that I understand that by empowering others, that I am able to, to make sure that my legacy is that uh, that folks are able to carry on long after I'm gone. And so not only those people that I, that I pastor, but my children and my students and my friends and my family, I have to learn to empower those people. And the way that I empower those people is to not only uh, not only be their pastor, but to also be their teacher. Amen. Not only to be uh, not only to be their coach, amen, but to also be their life coach, to be that person uh, that will not just uh, not just tell you what to do or not just to step in and to do things so that you can benefit from them. But my job is also to make sure that uh, that those who I am I am uh, put 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 in place to oversee uh, that I am empowering them, empowering them so that they can move forward and they can grow in the ways of God and grow in the gospel of, of Christ Jesus. So that long after I'm gone or if they it doesn't even have to be after I'm gone, if they relocate, they go to a different area, then they have the knowledge and they have the understanding and the experience to be able to to move forward and to do the things that are necessary to be done, even if I'm not in place. And I have a I have a personal mission statement that I've had for many years. And my personal mission statement is that my desire uh, is to is to is to bless somebody, is to introduce somebody to Christ who will one day introduce millions to Christ, even if they never know my name. And so I, I want to make it clear that, um, that that what's important to me is not that everybody knows me. I'm not, I, I don't need a popularity contest. That's not important to me. I'm a well-known person in, in the areas in which I, I operate. And, and that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. I'm thankful for it. But at the end of the day, what's important is not that I'm well-known, but it is that Christ is well-known. And if, if, if Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And so it is important that I get to a place that I understand that it's not just about me jumping in and doing things, but it's about me making sure that I empower others to do the things that need to be done so that God can be glorified, not just within my days, but so that God can be glorified in generations to come. 
And one of the one of the things that I deal with personally uh, when it comes to my own fallacies is that I'm such an uh, an on hands person, or excuse me, a hands on person uh, that I oftentimes will run myself ragged. Uh, I'll run I'll run myself down. I'll run to the point where I am completely out of energy because I've spent a lot of time trying to do things as opposed to doing what I ought to be doing. And I'm talking about me tonight. Uh, and, and that is empowering empowering others to be able to do those things. I even had a conversation with my trustees uh, in, in, at our ministry the other day about the simple fact that that one of the things that I have to learn to do is I have to learn to put things in their hands to guide them through those things, to make sure that they know what they're doing and to turn those things over to them. That's a difficult thing. And if you're honest with yourself, it's not just difficult for me, but it's difficult for a lot of you as well. And so that's one of the things that I'm working on within myself. And, and, and what that will do for me is that will allow me to have the strength and the energy to continue to go on to do God's work. Because here's the thing that I'm understanding. I'm getting older and I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. I had one grandmother that lived to be on almost 101. My other grandmother just passed away recently at 95. There's longevity in my family. My mama is in, in uh, going into her late seventies and she's in better shape than I am. And she looked better than I do too. Praise God. And man, so, so there's longevity in my family and I've had longevity spoken over my life. And I believe that to be so, but one of the ways that I know that I've got to be able to, uh, to prepare myself for that is that I've got to be able to delegate things. I've got to be able to, uh, to take some things off of me so that I have the strength and the energy so that I'm healthy enough because as much as we, Sometimes we'll, we'll try to focus on the spiritual. We also have to focus on, on, on our physical bodies as well. And I understand as I get older that I have to start working on me physically as well as emotionally, as well as spiritually, in order to be able to carry on the work, amen, that God has laid on my hands. And in order to do that, I have to be able to empower others. Notice what Jesus is saying in Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 28 through 30. Jesus says from the New King James Version, he says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so I share this scripture with you because I want us to understand that as we work on growing in God, one of the things that we have to do is we have to learn, amen, going back to my earlier statement, that everything that we can do, uh, just because we can do something doesn't mean that we ought to do it. Sometimes we need to use our knowledge and our abilities Amen. To empower somebody else to be able to do those things. Sometimes our job is not to be, amen, the person who swings the hammer. Sometimes our job is to be uh, the person who teaches somebody else where the nail goes. And so we have to make sure that we understand those things. And the way that we come to that understanding is by making sure that in every action that we uh, involve ourselves in, that we consult God as to what our role is in that action. Notice what he says. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. So what Jesus is saying to them is, if we'll we'll come to him and we'll consult him in our activities, then what he'll do is he will gently give us guidance to show us what things belong to us as far as what should be done by our hands and what things should be done by our teaching and by our minds. And, and, and so as Jesus shares this, he goes on and he finishes this portion of scripture. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so I, I share with you in this moment for all of us, as well as sharing with myself, God never intended. And you know, I, I, we used to sing the song, we will work and work till Jesus comes. Well, yeah, I'm gonna keep on working. I'm gonna keep on toiling. I'm gonna keep on stressing. I'm gonna keep on striving uh, till Jesus comes. I'm gonna keep doing that. But I also understand in this moment, and I've got to learn to apply this. I'm talking again, this is me, and I pray that you will see this for what it means to you. But I've got to get to the place where I am growing in Christ enough that I understand that not only do I need to work until Jesus comes, but I also need to apply what it is uh, that Jesus is saying to me to my daily activities. Because I understand that God wants me to work and he wants me to work hard, but he does not want me to kill myself while I'm working, because if I do so, amen, then I am no good to him because I am no longer in place to do his work. Also, we also have to understand that the enemy will sometimes use your own abilities. I preached this on Sunday. The, the, the enemy's biggest tool or his greatest tool against us is us. We, he uses us against ourselves. And he will sometimes 
allow us to get so busy in our activity or he will uh, let me let me rephrase that he will uh, he will guide us or he will trick us into being so busy in our activity because we think what we're doing is good and it may very well be good amen but but he'll allow us to see those things in those manners and he'll trick us uh, into doing too much and not and, and being good at a whole lot of stuff and not being great at anything where instead what we ought to be doing is we ought to be uh, focusing or we ought to be listening to God about what it is that we need to do with our hands and also listening to God about what it is that we need to teach others to do so that the work of God can be done. I have come to understand that this is not a one man show. Amen. The kingdom, I'm the pastor of the kingdom center, but the kingdom center is not the clinic center. It's the kingdom center. And it's a group of people that I have named. We stopped calling ourselves members, but we started calling each other ministry partners because we have to partner in this thing and I can't do it all by myself. And, and so I share with you tonight from the top, you got to love yourself because I want to, just as I've talked about all night, I want to empower not only me, but I want to empower all of you to understand, amen, that we've got to consult God about what it is that we ought to be doing. And then we ought to also consult God about what it is that we ought to be teaching so that those things that God needs done in his kingdom Amen. Will be done properly. They'll be done decent and in order. They'll be done in in, uh, in an excellent way. And, and and let me throw this in also. As I said that, let me make sure that we understand. That also means that all of us need to make sure that when we are doing things, that we do them in excellence. And I and and I'm not ridiculing anybody, but I say this: a lot of us want to half do things, and we want to put God's stamp on it, and, and and say you know that it was that it was God's will. Where, where the truth is a lot of times that we just have done it. And because we have did it, it didn't turn out right. But if we're going to do it for God, we've got to do it in excellence. And that's something I struggle with because when I turn something over, I want it done well. And, and, and I have to also realize that I'm not perfect. And those who I deal with are not perfect either. So tonight has been a night of self-reflection, uh, of, of self-examination for me. And I pray that you've been able to self-examine as well so that we can all begin to consult God about what it is uh, that we ought to be doing and what it is that we ought to be teaching. Because at the end of the day, if God's work is going to be done, we got to love God, but you also got to love yourself. And so I, I pray that tonight has been a night that we, we can all learn and listen to and we can grow from and God can be glorified in our lives. As we move forward, um, let us really consult God about what it is that we should be doing about how it is that we should be doing it. And then let us also consult God about uh, about what it is uh, that excellence look like, looks like in his eyes and not just have do things because uh, we're complacent with the way that things are. And so I share that with you tonight and I pray that you've been blessed. I pray that this has been a message, amen, that will cause us all to really take a look at the man in the mirror and ask him to change his ways because we want to make uh, the world a better place. If I might quote uh, Michael Jackson in that moment. And so I thank you all. I pray that uh, God has been glorified in this moment. And I pray that you have been blessed. And I pray that we can all grow together so that God can be glorified, so that God's kingdom can be grown, and so that we can all be blessed. Let us pray. Most holy and ever wise God, we thank you for just allowing us to have another opportunity to share in your word. God, I pray that as we have shared in your word, God, I pray that you have come into our hearts and our minds and you have uh, pricked us in a way that we can grow and we can love and we can learn because we understand, God, that when we stop learning, that we stop living. None of us know it all. None of us have it all together. But God, as Paul said, not that I've already attained, but I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so, God, we are all pressing towards you, seeking a kingdom experience in our daily lives. We thank you, God, and we give you glory. It is in Jesus name that we pray. Amen and amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Again, I pray that you've been blessed. Uh, again, we pray for all the situations that are going on around us. We, we thank God and we celebrate with all of those who are, are having birthdays and anniversaries. We thank God for, for all those situations. Uh, you all pray our strength in the Lord as Deborah and I continue to press forward towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Continue to, to learn to lean and depend on Jesus. And remember that you got to love God, but you also got to love yourself. You all come out and join us uh, on Sunday morning. Uh, we're at 1000 Shepherd School Road. We're, we're having services 
at the Zebulon Middle School Auditorium. Uh, come on out and join us on Sunday morning. We are doing our very best to glorify God to the utmost. I'm not going to say we have it all together, but what I will tell you is that we are a ministry that focuses on God and God alone. Amen. There are no, 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 there are no egos. Amen. We come in and we seek a kingdom experience when we come in. So come on out and join us at 1015 on Sunday morning at Zebulon Middle School Auditorium, 1000 Shepherd School Road in Zebulon, North Carolina. We're there every Sunday, but fifth Sundays. Uh, so come on out and join us when you can. We'd love to see you come into the place. If you're here tonight and you don't know Christ Jesus as your personal savior, reach out to us. Hit us up through uh, our, our ministry inbox, my personal inbox. Uh, hit our ministry line, 252-654-2135. Um, reach out to us. Give us the opportunity to lead you to Christ. And if God um, if, if God wants you to join us and be a part of, be one of our ministry partners at the Kingdom Center, then we welcome you. And if, if we can lead you to Christ and God wants you to fellowship somewhere else, then praise be to God as well. Because I say to you often, I'm not a sheep herder, I'm a shepherd. And my job is to shepherd those who God allows to come to, to the flock that he has assigned my hands to. And so we thank you in advance. If you want to be a financial blessing, dollar sign Kingdom NC is our cash app. You can go to our website, kingdomnc.org. Uh, you, can, you can be a blessing to us there as well. Uh, we are really getting some opportunities to be a blessing lately, uh, especially lately to some people. And so uh, we believe that as we open our hands to bless others, that God will continue to open his hands to bless us. And so we give God glory. Understand that when we have the ability to bless somebody else, it is not because we've been so good, but it's because we serve a great God. We thank you. We give you glory. We give God glory and we bless you. You all have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Well, hopefully we'll see you on Sunday morning. God bless. Lenny Wilkins bringing us another message on this Monday afternoon on your lunch break. Join us again next week, the same time, same station. For the best thing, gospel, the best in praise, and the best in the living of God's word. From your best and our best, we do it all for the Lord. And thank you so much again for chatting in. For tuning in, thank those around the world. We say peace and blessings to each and every one of you, and we'll see you on the next time next Monday, 12 noon. The Kingdom Center. Be blessed.